Hello students, in this video we will study pharmacology of angiotensin. Now angio means blood vessels and tensin means increase in pressure. So angiotensin increases blood pressure. Always remember angiotensin is an agent that increases blood pressure. So now let's define angiotensin. Angiotensin is an oligopeptide hormone circulating in the blood. It is found in the blood. It causes vasoconstriction and an increase in the blood pressure. So angiotensin increases blood pressure primarily by causing vasoconstriction. Now look at this figure. Now this is a normal blood vessel. This is the lumen of a normal blood vessel. Now angiotensin constrict the blood vessel. That means angiotensin contracts the smooth muscles which are found in the wall of the blood vessel. So angiotensin constrict the blood vessel. The lumen of the blood vessel reduces. The effective diameter of the blood vessel reduces. This is termed as vasoconstriction. So angiotensin induces vasoconstriction and vasoconstriction causes increase in blood pressure. So angiotensin is an oligopeptide hormone that means it is made up of eight amino acid. It constricts the blood vessels, it produces vasoconstriction, it reduces the effective diameter of the blood vessel and this causes rise in the blood pressure. So angiotensin increases the blood pressure. Now angiotensin is a key hormone of renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Now renin angiotensin aldosterone system plays a very important role in regulating blood pressure and the blood volume. So the main pharmacological action of angiotensin is to regulate blood pressure. Now let's study how angiotensin regulates the blood pressure. Now look at this figure. This is a blood vessel. Now blood is circulating in this blood vessel. Now fall in the blood pressure stimulates kidney to release renin. And the liver produces angiotensinogen. Now both renin and angiotensinogen are released in the blood. Now renin breaks angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 is also called as proangiotensin. Now this angiotensin 1 is inactive. Now lungs produce angiotensin converting enzyme that is ACE. Now this angiotensin converting enzyme converts inactive angiotensin 1 to vasoactive angiotensin 2. Now this angiotensin 2 is also called as angiotensin. So this is how angiotensin or angiotensin 2 is produced because of fall in the blood pressure. So fall in the blood pressure increases or enhances the production of angiotensin 2 in the blood. Now angiotensin about which we are talking here is actually angiotensin 2. Now let's uh, talk about the pharmacological actions of angiotensin 2. Now as we already know primary function of angiotensin or angiotensin 2 is to increase the blood pressure. Now angiotensin 2 stimulates posterior pituitary to release antidiuretic hormone that is ADH. Now diuresis is increased volume of urine. Now increased volume of urine causes increased loss of fluids from the body. Now, as the name suggests, antidiuretic hormone prevents diuresis. It prevents the loss of body fluids from the kidney by increasing reabsorption of water in the collecting ducts of the kidney. Now, increased reabsorption of water by the kidneys increase the blood volume. An increase in the blood volume always produces rise in the blood pressure. Next, angiotensin 2 is a dipsogen. It acts upon the hypothalamus and stimulates thirst. This causes increase in the water intake. 
Next, angiotensin 2 stimulates adrenal medulla to increase the release of adrenaline. Now, adrenaline is a sympathomimetic. It also indu induces vasoconstriction and cause increase in the blood pressure. Now, next, angiotensin 2 enhances sympathetic activity by stimulating sympathetic nervous system. This increases release of noradrenaline. Now, noradrenaline is also a sympathetic neurotransmitter and it increases blood pressure. Further, angiotensin 2 stimulates adrenal cortex to enhance the release of aldosterone. Now, aldosterone increases reabsorption of sodium and further increase reabsorption of water in the distal convoluted tubule of the kidney. Now, increased sodium and water reabsorption increases the blood volume, thereby increasing the blood pressure. Now, aldosterone also mediates increase in the excretion of potassium. Now, as discussed, angiotensin 2 is a vasoconstrictor and vasoconstriction reduces effective diameter of the blood vessels and produce rise in the blood pressure. So, this explains how fall in the blood pressure stimulates increased production of angiotensin 2 and how angiotensin 2 increases the blood pressure. Now, very important to understand here is this that excessive or too much production of angiotensin 2 can cause hypertension. After synthesis and pharmacological actions of uh, angiotensin or angiotensin 2, let's see how angiotensin 2 is metabolized. Now, angiotensin 2 has a short half-life of, of about one minute. Now, the enzyme aminopeptidase first degrade angiotensin 2 to angiotensin 3. Angiotensin 3 is further degraded by the same enzyme aminopeptidase to angiotensin 4. Now, angiotensin 3 and angiotensin 4 are further degraded to inactive fragments by the enzyme angiotensinases. So, this is how angiotensin is metabolized and converted to inactive fragments. Now, let's talk about the angiotensin 2 receptors. Now, there are two subtypes of angiotensin 2 receptors. Angiotensin 1 receptor and angiotensin 2 receptor, where angiotensin 1 is the main receptor. Now, angiotensin 2 produces majority of its actions by binding to angiotensin 1 receptor. Now, this angiotensin 1 receptor is located or it is expressed on the vascular smooth muscles. That is the smooth muscles which are found in the wall of the blood vessels. Now, this uh, AT1 receptor is found in the uh, myocardium that is it is found on the cardiac muscles then it is found on the um, adrenal gland kidney liver brain etc now angiotensin 1 receptors are g protein coupled receptors now they produce pharmacological action through different transducer mechanisms in different tissues now, look at this figure of uh, blood vessel. This is a blood vessel. Now, this is the wall of the blood vessel. Now, wall of the blood vessel is made up of smooth muscles. Uh, and these smooth muscles are called as the vascular smooth muscles. Now, angiotensin uh, contracts these smooth muscles uh, which are found in the wall of the blood vessels. So, on vascular smooth muscle cells, uh, which are found in the wall of blood vessel, angiotensin binds to angiotensin 1 receptor. So, angiotensin binds to GQ protein coupled receptor that is the angiotensin 1 receptor and this binding of angiotensin 2 to this receptor causes activation of phospholipase C. Now, activation of phospholipase C 
increases the concentration of second messengers namely anisotol triphosphate and diacylglycerol now this further increases the intracellular calcium now we know that increase in the intracellular calcium concentration causes the vasoconstriction so this is how angiotensin 2 causes vasoconstriction it causes contraction of the smooth muscles which are found in the wall of the blood vessel and contraction of these mus muscles causes vasoconstriction diameter of the blood vessel reduces and this vasoconstriction produces increase in the blood pressure now binding of angiotensin 2 to angiotensin 1 receptor on the kidneys myocardium adrenal medulla causes activation of membrane calcium channels now activation of these calcium channels increase intracellular calcium now increase in the intracellular calcium is responsible for the release of aldosterone from the adrenal cortex and it also causes depolarization of adrenal medulla which causes release of adrenaline from the adrenal medulla now another very important pharmacological action of angiotensin 2 which is mediated by angiotensin 1 receptor now increased levels of angiotensin 2 for a long period can cause vascular hypertrophy and ventricular hypertrophy hypertrophy means increase in the size of the cells now look at this uh, diagram this is a blood vessel this is the wall of the blood vessel wall of the blood vessel is made up of smooth muscle cells now contraction of these smooth muscle cells cause, causes vasoconstriction and relaxation of these smooth muscle cells produces the vasodilation now angiotensin 2 induces hypertrophy of these smooth muscle cells that means angiotensin 2 causes increase in the size of these smooth muscle cells now increase in the size of these smooth muscle cells causes thickening of the blood vessel the blood vessel reduces is its uh, flexibility there is fall in the flexibility of the blood vessel so the blood vessel loses its flexibility and the blood vessel contracts uh, very forcefully uh, because of the increased size of the smooth muscles now this causes sustained hypertension or this causes permanent hypertension now this sustained hypertension is the root cause of all cardiovascular problems now apart from this uh, this is the uh, diagram of the heart uh, this is the wall of the heart now this is the left ventricle now we know that when the left left ventricle contracts it pushes the blood into the iota and the iota supplies the blood throughout the body now angiotensin 2 makes this wall of the left ventricle thick and this is called as the left ventricular hypertrophy it causes hypertrophy of the cardiac cells now left ventricular hy hypertrophy increases the risk of congestive heart failure stroke sudden cardiac death now angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors for example enalapril and angiotensin 1 receptor blockers for example Luz lozartan these drugs are antihypertensive and these drugs also reduce or regress left ventricular hypertrophy so these uh, this category of drugs are very important antihypertensive drugs so uh, this is in brief on pharmacology of angiotensin if you find the video useful kindly like subscribe and share this video thanks for watching this video